Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and I have some crazy stories for you today. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I talk about personal finance and personal growth. And today, what I'm about to share with you not only improved my finances, but it's also made me into the man I am today. At some point or another, we all go through hard times, whether that's mentally, physically, financially, or some weird combination of the three. Whenever we go through these hard times, it's easy to feel like a victim, like everything is coming against you and it feels like you're just not in control. At least that's how I felt in the past until I realized I had a choice. I realized that life will continue to happen and challenges will always come and at some point I will experience something that completely knocks me off of my center and I can either decide to get up from that and better myself so I can learn from what I'm going through or I can keep complaining, never improve and wonder why I'm not getting anywhere in life. I chose to better myself and by the end of this video you'll know all about the money habits I learned from going through some of the hardest times in my life and I just want to show you that you can turn a negative experience into a positive financial future. So I've had three big struggles in my life and it all started off with what was supposed to be one of the happiest moments of my life, graduation. Not graduation itself, but what happened after graduation, stepping to my first real job. You know, when you've worked literally your entire life to achieve something that most people in your age group have never done before, it's a special type of disheartening when literally the moment you step into your workplace, everything that can go wrong does. Let me explain. I walked in, everyone knew I just graduated, so they were able to do some very simple math to figure out how old I was, which was 21 at the time. That created a negative perception right off the bat, and that really didn't bother me, but it's relevant to what I have to say next. On top of that, I was put in charge of some of the most misbehaved employees within my entire department, and when you've never led a single person in your entire life, that is very hard to control. And by the way, this was a management position. But I was okay with that too. I like a good challenge. The only problem with that is I had to fully rely on a bunch of misbehaved grown folks to do a good job so we could all hit our numbers. And that didn't really pan out very well because when people who work for you don't like you, they tend not to want to work. So I'm what you would call an against the grain type of person. I've never cared about how much the odds seemed like they were stacked against me because I just always felt like I'd come out on top anyways. So pretty much everything I just said, I ignored. Until one day I went back home to visit family and two catastrophic things happened at once. So the first thing that happened was my three year relationship ended on the third year anniversary and somebody died at work. Like seriously, he just collapsed on the floor one day, had a heart attack, got rushed to the hospital, he did not make it. Those two things were setbacks that I couldn't just ignore. For one, we all know how a breakup feels, so you know I'm not even exaggerating when I say that was something that was very hard for me to deal with at the time. Two, the guy who passed away was in my department and I had just talked to him. Like, I don't know, man, stuff like that just always kind of throws me off and gives me the chills. It's kind of weird. Anyways, it impacted me in more ways than I could have ever imagined because the way I got the news was just so unacceptable. Hey Reggie, so bad news, we lost an employee today. So sad, such a tragedy, oh my gosh, condolences. So anyways, we need you to work and fill in for him every single day indefinitely. That includes tonight. Okay, bye. Yeah, that happened. Keep in mind, I'm in the middle of visiting family and I had to cut that short and drive an hour and a half back over there without any sleep and definitely without any peace of mind whatsoever. Everything was so fresh, I didn't even tell anybody about the breakup, which definitely backfired in the long run. Let me break this down for you. I worked the night shift and I had just went to shift after about a month of training. And the way it worked is we had two different shifts at night, which rotated every two days. So basically on the days that I was supposed to have been off, I had to work. Do you have any idea how hard it is to not have leadership experience while leading a team who just lost somebody very dear to them? And to top it all off, his wife was on the crew too. It was the roughest thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. And there was no place for me to escape mentally because I was at work all the time. So imagine a chaotic, fast-paced environment where no one under you likes you because they've coined you as some kid who's out to get everyone and make a name for himself because he thinks he's so smart just because he has a college degree. Oh, and you get no support from your bosses. So that was what my shifts thought of me, which slowly became the thoughts that everyone had on every shift because everyone talks and it was just like a glorified high school. 
So even when I came to support the ship that wasn't even mine, no one really wanted to hear what I had to say like that. Plus they were about sad because they all just lost someone who worked with them for the last 20 years. So because of all this, numbers were low and my bosses were mad pretty much every day they came into low numbers. People were going to my boss complaining about me saying I was doing things that I didn't even do. My ex was blowing up my phone every chance she got and I was just trying to figure everything out, man. You know what I mean? So I saw firsthand how cold and unforgiving the real world can be. And what I realized is no one cared. You think my bosses cared that I was young and inexperienced? No, they still expected me to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and perform at a high level every single day. Oh, your numbers are low? You're not on top of everything? You're not on your stuff? Whose fault is that? Somebody died? Oh, well, you, you still gotta lead these people. Those things made me realize just how small my problems were to everyone around me. And I even got to thinking myself, oh, you going through a breakup? Tough. You signed up for this. After I came to these realizations, I figured, man, if it's like this at work, just imagine how it is with life in general. And the crazy thing is all these things that were happening at work were happening so consistently that I started to fear losing my job because they already made a few examples out of my peers in the short time that I was there. And I was like, nah, that's not about to be me. So I decided no matter what, I was gonna be on top of my game financially. I decided that I was gonna take time every day to educate myself on how to manage my personal finances. That was looking up how I could improve my spending habits. That was seeing how I could automate bank accounts. Should I save my money or should I get out of debt? And that was learning early on about building other streams of income. I did that every single day without fail, whether or not I lost sleep because I was not about to become a statistic. But check this out. I didn't just watch videos and read books about it. I actually applied what I learned as I learned it and I didn't stop there. That money habit is something I still do to this day, but the reason behind it was to have a peace of mind, to know that even though I'm new to this real world stuff, I'm still in control of something that no one can take away from me. I can't even explain how dark of a place I was in at that time, but ironically, the idea that no one cared, the fact that knowing that everyone only cared about themselves inspired me to self-improve. For me, it wasn't just about the money, it was about everything. I still went to work, fell flat on my face every single day for like three months straight, running off of four hours of sleep a night. I just got better. I still found time to hit the gym and improve my physique, my endurance, and reduce my stress. I had no escape, so I had to create one. If no one else is gonna care, I might as well put the work and the time in to improve myself despite what's going on in my life. I just told myself, life is gonna go on anyway, so you might as well improve while life is going on no matter what. People saw that. They saw the confidence radiating from me. They saw my determination, and they saw me smiling through my hard times, and it pissed them off. Good. And you know what? Eventually I got through that hard time. And now that I really look back on it, maybe I would have fallen on extremely hard financial times if I would have just curled into a ball and kept surrendering to what was going on around me because they probably would have seen a lack of drive and fired me. Because another fear I had was ending up like Bob. Who's Bob? Broke on bills. You know what I'm saying? See, I had to pay rent for two apartments when I first graduated for the first three months because the lease that I had at college wasn't quite up yet. And I wasn't able to sublease the apartment in time, so I was stuck with both bills. And what I'm saying is I had a bunch of bills in terms of how much I was spending on them, but I was making just enough money to pay those bills. So I felt like I was going broke just paying my bills. At the end of each of those three months, I really didn't have all that much money left over. So I looked at that and I looked at my situation at work. I was like, man, this doesn't look too good. So, you know, I, I just kept improving, man. My boss told me I needed to be more assertive, that I needed to manage my time better. I even got my job threatened a few times. I just kept going straight back to the drawing board and making changes. That fear of losing my job went away pretty quickly because at the very beginning, I decided I was going to make sure my finances were taken care of. I figured out how to make more money outside of work. I figured out how to save $20,000 in a short amount of time because I knew if I lost my job and my finances weren't together, I could only rely on family so much. Based off of the previous themes of what I just told you, I figured it would be one of those, oh, you, you lost your job? You should have done better. Why didn't you have any money saved up? Whose fault is that? 
especially as a man. That's just how it is. And I know I have women watching this too, but especially for my guys watching, I really hope you're listening to what I say and you're taking it at face value because it's true, bro. This world is extremely unforgiving to men and there's not a lot of people who would go out of their way to help you, so you've gotta be on it. Before I get carried away, let me tell you about the second time I fell on hard times. After I healed from the catastrophic events that I was just telling you about, I had a lot of internal battles, man. I second guessed myself a lot. My confidence was inconsistent. It just fluctuated a lot for some reason. And it wasn't because of anything in particular that I was going through. It was just because I kept asking myself this one question, what if? And I'll tell you why. My first dose of the real world really left a bad taste in my mouth, and I think it scarred me because even though I healed from it and learned from that experience, it still followed me. And that's when I've learned you can't self-improve yourself out of bad memories that have literally embedded themselves in your brain. Here's what I mean. I don't know about you, but usually when everything is going well in my life, that's when I get a little nervous because everything I just explained to you, just before all of that stuff happened, my life was my definition of perfect. And then everything just kind of hit the fan. So let's fast forward when I'm thriving in my job. Everything looks good, numbers are high, my department was winning awards, and most importantly, I was out of the department that I was just talking about in my first story. So I thought everything would be different now. I thought that I would get my normal days off, that I would be treated better, and that I'd be valued. Those thoughts gave me the what ifs. What if you go through the same exact thing you just did in your last apartment? What if you have to work every single day with no days off in sight? I had these thoughts and I had to ignore them until those things actually started happening. Then I realized those weren't what if questions. That was my intuition telling me I was headed for the same exact mess I just got finished going through. The thing is, since I had this newfound confidence due to self-improvement, the what if questions I was asking myself started to sound like, what if I spoke my mind to my boss? What if I just walked out right now and didn't come back? This led to two things, internal battles and the fear of taking risks, which actually led to me developing two more money habits, but the difference is these actually changed my life. So the internal battles came from knowing that I had to go to a place that I knew I didn't want to go to and deal with people that I knew I didn't want to talk to while putting up with the demands of a boss who blatantly disrespected me on a daily basis, all while knowing I had to put on some facade and just pretend like I was all in for a place that would replace me if I died tomorrow, just like in my first story. My internal battles were very simple. Outside of work, I never tolerated any type of disrespect. Inside of work, I felt like I had to tolerate all types of disrespect just to keep the paychecks coming. That had me conflicted. Now on top of that, add on the fact that I had to work every single day again, but this time I had to work every single day because the manager on the other shift, the opposite shift, decided to quit. And he probably quit because of what I'm about to tell you right now. I didn't feel like I was in control of my life at all. And I could not for the life of me, I could not understand how anyone could want to deal with this crap for 30 to 40 years just because of good pay. By the way, when I was furthering my financial education and bettering myself every single day, when I first started that habit in the first story, I quickly realized I actually wasn't making that much money at all because I realized there were kids my age making my yearly salary in one month. We ain't gonna talk about that though. Instead, we're gonna talk about the fact that my vacations were canceled, my peers' vacations were canceled, my peers were disrespected, walked out, sent home, cussed out, threatened, everything under the sun. And these were people who worked there faithfully for longer than I've been living. I was like, nah, I've seen enough. Y'all tripping. Y'all talking about some 30, 40 years of this mess. I haven't even been here two years yet and I'm ready to retire. This is just ridiculous. I've got to find my own way of taking control because this ain't cutting it. And that was the reality that once again put me in a dark place. And for me, it was the combination of the lack of respect and lack of control. That right there bothered me to no end to the point where I was watching a bunch of entrepreneurship videos and I stumbled across a few unpopular yet extremely important personal finance videos that tell you the truth. The ones that say, hey, saving money is cool and everything, but if you really want financial freedom, if you really want to make a living off of something other than a job, then you really need to focus on increasing your income. And from that point on, that was my main point of focus. I figured if no one was gonna care about my hardships, I would put myself in a position to never have to go through any financial hardships. If no one was gonna give me a raise, fine. I'm gonna give myself a raise. Because guess what? Every one of the realizations that I came up with in my first story still applies. 
Here's the money habit I developed. I started to look at and think of a bunch of different ways that I could make extra money instead of waiting on someone to give me extra money just because I thought I deserved it. And I went pretty heavy on this. I learned about investing and what it really meant to invest. And I figured out how to build passive income streams so I wasn't trading all of my time for money. Because of those habits, because of those money habits right there, I've been able to consistently make more money every single year, I have multiple streams of income, and I make money in my sleep, which was something I could have only dreamed of a few years ago. Instead of getting caught up in just saving money, I also learned how to generate more income constantly because anything could happen at any given time, like the pandemic. It hurt so many people financially. A lot of families have financial struggles because of this still. Just to put it into perspective, those $1,400 stimulus checks we're about to get, some people need those to survive. They count on those. That was my why. That was why I gladly dedicated my early 20s to financial education because it can prevent some real problems down the road. Now, on top of this, I was still conflicted because I was in the process of building other streams of income, but I got to the point where I stopped caring about work because I was so heavily invested in changing my future and making sure I wouldn't have to rely on one stream of income ever again. So whenever my boss got to talking crazy and threatening my job, I was just like, yeah, okay, yeah, great, awesome, go ahead. See, I finally developed that lack of fear when it came to losing my job, but I still had the fear of taking risks to do what I've always wanted to do. Walking out of there and never coming back. I used to daydream and fantasize about that very moment every single day. I even dreamed about it sometimes. But I didn't want to be that guy that just walked away from a job with no other options, having to live off of my savings while I looked for work. I didn't want that life, which was a very rational way of thinking. Problem with that is it really messed with me mentally because I knew I was in a good spot with my savings. I knew that I was on track to building other streams of income and I knew exactly what I wanted, but I still knew that I was going to a place where it was the last place in the world I wanted to go to and I fantasized about leaving there every single day. I used to have such bad days, man. You know how when you, some, some mornings you just, you wake up a few minutes late, so you're rushing to get to work. You get there on time, but then everything goes wrong. There's machines down. There's people acting crazy. There's the boss yelling at you. And then, you know, your shoes untied. Then you walk outside to leave at the end of the day, and it's freaking raining outside. I used to get so mad. I used to blame the rain for why I had such a bad day. Like, and it's raining. I hate it here. So this is like a mental game of tug of war I had with myself constantly. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. I lost sleep some nights because of this so I had to compromise with myself and that was finding another job across the country 36 hours away from where I lived by car far away from my friends and family but something had to give bro it was either stay where I am and remain miserable or take a leap of faith move across the country and see what happens I had developed such an abundant mindset that I was like you know what if I go all the way out there and it doesn't work out guess freaking what I will move across the country again I will start over as many times as it takes because I am young and I can start over as many times as I need to but I will not be miserable so I did just that. I moved across the country and it was the best decision I've ever made. That was much more than a money habit though, but I'll say this. The money habit that I did develop within all of this craziness was I had to develop the skill of assessing my financial ability to even move across the country, which means I had to think everything through and I had to calculate my every move months in advance. Because what I didn't want to do was go broke while pursuing happiness because that would have been ironic. Speaking of irony, a lot of people ask me, Reggie, you appreciate those hard times now, don't you? Well, yeah, yes and no. I do appreciate them because of the fact that I was able to derive positive life-changing habits from them and I can use those lessons to teach you in my videos. But at the same time, I really don't appreciate any of this stuff happening because these things do scar people and I've seen multiple people who've had similar stories to what I've just described in this video and I've watched people have these things paralyze them, destroy their confidence, completely rip them apart to the point where they're just hollow shells of their former selves. That's not cool, bro. So I'll say this, if you're going through something right now, anything at all, always think of ways that you can improve yourself. Because at the end of the day, when I give you the last two words in every single video, just before my camera turns off, it's all about staying sharp no matter what's going on in your life. And that's mentally, physically, financially. Always improve yourself. Always educate yourself. Try new things. In the military, they say stay frosty. On this channel, I say stay cold. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, 
control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe. Stay cold.